Ken's stance in relation to the tribunal was it was all a farce, it was all a fix, so he wasn't going to give evidence. Ken wanted to put in before the tribunal a long 40-page statement of denial of his guilt. The tribunal said, we're not going to look at that if you're not giving evidence. When they came to give their judgment, they pretended, and there's no other word for it, that Ken Sarawiwa hadn't challenged any of the prosecution evidence so they could take it all as being true without even having to think about whether it was or not. And that just seemed to me to be totally dishonest and to show their bias against him. A lot of things were becoming pretty clear towards the end and, and, and also in the letters he received there were a lot of pe people were very worried about how things were going but in his usual nature he'd laugh and tell them not to worry and that look even if it went on that they should know that um, um, they have to ca carry on and he gave a lot of courage. It was amazing to see and he knew that he could go either way but yet his spirit was high very high. I remember about a few days before the judgment, he came to me about 4 a.m. and said that he had one dream and that we were in the judgment hall. They had finished the judgment and he was still sitting down there alone. People had gone. Then he was asking people to show him the way to his village. It was like he was treading a lonely path to that place and he couldn't understand the language. He thought that, well, these people are out to, to do their worst. And so he had this sort of feeling. We now resolve, we must damn them. Even if they want to kill us, we should just damn the whole thing about whatever. None of us must show any sign of weakness. Let them go to hell. We're in real trouble. I've started to prepare Mama and Papa for the worst so they do not get dismayed when I'm convicted. However, that will not be the end of the story, as you well know. Before sentence was passed, in his last public statement, Ken Saruwiwa made a final appeal for the people of the Niger Delta. There is no possibility whatsoever that I or most of us would ever have planned any such action. And I will forever avow it no matter what any forum decides upon. I appeal to you, my Lord, for only one, for only one thing. The Ogoni people have suffered tremendously in this country. They have made tremendous contributions to this country. The Naga Delta itself is in serious trouble. We need every assistance that we can get. On the 31st of October, Kensaro Wiwa and eight others were found guilty and sentenced to death by hanging. Six of the total 15 defendants were acquitted, including Ledham Mitte. After the, the judgment was read, when they pronounced, they said I was, they discharged me. At first I had, well, oh God, thank God. But next, when I heard what they were saying, they condemned this thing. I broke down and cried. He was the person holding me in that court. Ken was saying, why? Don't do that. Remember, we said we wouldn't show weakness to these people, let them not get a pride and all that. But I couldn't help it. I couldn't imagine. It was my life was already intertwined with this group. We've stayed, we've stayed in circumstances that we were like brothers. With the announcement of the death sentences, the story became international for the first time. The only hope that my father has now, the Commonwealth doesn't say anything, he, he will be executed. We went to the Commonwealth Conference because we felt that the Commonwealth had the authority and uh, the standing to actually make a, a strong statement to prevent disaster happening. 
In a race against time, Ken Wewa sought out President Nelson Mandela, who was seen as the most influential African figure at the conference. We did try to meet President Mandela because we felt he was one politician with the authority and the standing to say something, to intervene on my father's behalf and on behalf of all the other Ogunis. We tried to meet him and we didn't. I would rather leave by this task to people who are more experienced than myself and who have been busy with Nigeria all along. Mounting criticism greeted the Nigerian contingent on arrival in Auckland. Meanwhile, Commonwealth leaders took no action against Nigeria, who announced on the 8th of November that the death sentences were confirmed. I didn't have time to even consider on, on a personal level um, the implications of what was happening. I just had to digest the information and, and just respond to it. In, in a way which would have the most impact, and which would try to save his life. So, it, you know, I, I, I almost sort of blank out the, uh, the implications of hearing that the consensus had been confirmed. For if the Commonwealth is to live up to those ideals, it must be effective. And to be effective, it must have moral authority. But no one had reacted quickly enough. On November the 10th, the Agoni Nine were taken to Port Harcourt Prison to be hanged by the neck. Ken Sarawiwa's last words were, I never destroyed my people, but my people are killed. If it be that I can die to free my people, please my God, and the gods and soil of Agoni land, allow me to die. In less than two hours, all the Agoni Nine were dead. The bodies were dumped in this graveyard, where acid was poured over them to remove any trace of their existence. No one has been allowed to visit the graves. I was devastated. True. Totally. I... I just asked where was God? How can you? Let an innocent man be killed in that sort of horrible manner. <laughs>